Kevin Owens is bored to death? Dominic Mysterio is a criminal? Uncle Howdy is the real uncle of Alexa Bliss? The Judgment Day killed the entire tag team division? Yes, that's Monday Night Raw in a nutshell. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, if you're listening to me and if you want to watch and if you want to know my personal opinion, you should stay until the end because I'm making one stick official for this series and that's the best moment of the show so stick until the end to see what's the best moment of this show at least for me i i cannot just sit here and tell you that i don't love ko for the past year i've been in love with ko he's so goofy he's such a likable guy he's funny he's nice he's smart I like the full Ezekiel storyline, Elias, the, the fact that he, he came back as a prize fighter and everything like that. And right now he was about to cut a promo in Monday Night Raw and Baron Corbin came out. He bored him to death with his promo. And to be fair with you guys, I feel the same way as Kevin Owens when there is JBL out there and Baron Corbin. Okay, Baron Corbin not, but... JBL, yes. So we we had a match, Kevin Owens versus Baron Corbin, and basically Kevin Owens won. After that, Alexa Bliss came out and she was about to tell us why she did the things she do on the last Monday night. What am I doing with my hands? I feel like she started saying something and then we cut to Uncle Howdy, who said that he is her biological long uncle. No, he didn't say that, but he came out and it's really interesting. The whole storyline with Bray Wyatt, Alexa and Uncle Howdy is really interesting and I'm pretty sure that someone else is gonna get involved as well, but we are gonna see, time will tell. It's a really long-term storytelling and I cannot wait to see what we want. I cannot wait to see, yeah. After that, we had uh, a little bit of impromptu match, in my opinion, Bailey versus Michin. Game. Uh, I was expecting Becky to be there to side with Michin, but uh, Becky wasn't there. And basically, Michin got rolled. Nothing too fancy. I feel like Michin has a lot of potential in her, but uh, I don't want to say that she's booked the wrong way because a lot of people will say I'm some sort of a hater or something, but she needs to get more momentum. Uh, she's really strong. She was really rusty at the beginning but right now she's okay and i i think she needs a, a few matches against jobbers to to be in the same sub spot as ria bianca bailey is a little bit on another level but uh, bailey cannot elevate her at the moment because she's trying to elevate herself in a way because she's not a champion <laughs> such a loser um, then we had a little bit of impromptu match as well i was uh, complaining last week how the bloodline came to Monday Night Raw and we we're having these random ass matches just to fill time. Uh, this week we had Solo Sikoa versus Dolph Ziggler and the whole story behind the match was because two weeks ago or something the bloodline beat Dolph Ziggler and now he wants his revenge. That's weird as it gets. Also, Ali came to Dolph Ziggler and he was like, we could enter the tag team turmoil match. And I was wondering... What? what is going on? Why we're not investing more time to develop these storylines? Because in reality, Dolph Ziggler and Mustafa Ali would be a great matchup. I don't know. It would be... <laughs> is it just me? We had Rhea Ripley and the Poison Pixie. Can I tell you something, guys? I didn't watch the match in full attention, but I can share with you. I love the Candice LeRae song. I'm vibing with it. Du -du 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 I, I cannot sing or I don't have any musical talent at all, but I like the song of Candice LeRae. I like the song of uh, Rhea Ripley as well, like how can you not? The Judgment Day version of This Is My Brutality is amazing. Anyway, the match itself was uh, kind of a squash match, kind of sad for Candice, but Rhea is probably gonna win this year's Royal Rumble, so uh, we need to build her up. Do you remember a few, a few years ago when Drew McIntyre won the Rumble? He was on a winning streak before that, so yeah, I'm not mad about it. And after that, we had the tag team turmoil match. 
uh, who determined who will face the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. And we started with Judgment Day versus the OC. The Judgment Day won. After that, the Hurt Business. Did I mention that the Hurt Business is back? No, they're not. Let's move on. Uh, we had the OC, the Hurt Business, Alpha Academy, and the Street Profits. I feel like I'm missing one tag team. But anyway, before the last match, before the Street Profits came out, uh, basically Finn Balor got injured and Dominic should have uh, replaced him. And he was like, oh, I'm not ready, I've been into prison and stuff like that. I don't understand that whole gimmick. Uh, in my opinion, they should have made him more badass lookable with that prison thing, but anyway. Uh, so basically, somehow, the Judgment Day rolled through everyone. The the cool part at the end of the show was that the Usos came out and they were like, We're the ones! We're the ones! I acknowledge you, my bloodline. Actually, I acknowledge a tribal chief. I'm not sure if I acknowledge the bloodline. So we're here. We are at the end of the show and I'm about to tell you which is the greatest moment of the show. Dawkins and the Street Profits still along. And you've still got Finn Balor out here. I love when Montes Ford barks. This is not barking, but, but it's cool. In general, the show receives a 4.5. It's just my show. It's just my score. If you judge, don't be judgmental. Or you're gonna end up in the judgment day. I figured out a way how to end up these videos. Um, and the best way 